Eight. 26.8%. 26.8% children books were published in 2020. What about authors of color? 30% of children's books published featured a main character of color. Although this is an increase from 2019, there is still a huge disparity in representation of children's literature. Join us on February the 22nd at 6 p.m. as we celebrate the National African American Reading. An event for the entire family. This event is virtual and will be live streamed on the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library's YouTube and Facebook pages. Come with your children for a live read aloud from local authors and join me and a few other local authors for a live panel discussion on the lack of representation in children's literature. Hope to see you there. Hello, 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 and welcome to the second annual celebration of the National African American Reading. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library, and thank you for spending this hour with us. So my name is Jasmine McNeil, and I am the lead for Reading in Color here at the library, and we have an amazing night plan for you. So our first half is going to be three local authors reading their titles for you all tonight, and then the second half, stick around parents and teens for a live panel discussion on the lack of representation and diversity in children's literature. Once again, my name is Jasmine McNeil, and I will join you all later on for the panel. I want to introduce you to your host tonight, Miss Sydney. Porter. Hello, everyone. My name is Sydney Porter, and I am the teen librarian here at Imaginon. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first reader for tonight is going to be Harrison Martin. He is originally from Greenville, South Carolina, but relocated to Charlotte, NC, and graduated from East Mecklenburg High School. One thing that Harrison really wants everyone to know is that he loves bacon. So much so that he will be reading his book for us tonight, The Bacon Tree. Take it away, Harrison. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sydney. Hello, I am Harrison Martin. I am one of the co-authors, of course, of the book, The Bacon Tree. I actually read it with my brother-in-law, and it's a fun story about adventure and friendship and, of course, bacon. Uh, and it has two kids, uh, Harry and Philip, who go on a late night trip to the bacon tree. So let's get into it, shall we? All right. There once was a bacon tree that gave bacon as far as the eye could see. Whether breakfast, lunch, or a snack for thee, you could always go to the bacon tree. There was a boy named Harry and a boy named Philip. They went to the tree for a late night Philip. They ran to the tree excited and perky, knowing it never gave bacon made of turkey. They got to the tree and said, hooray, Philip asked. How many pieces will we get today? Harry replied, don't you mean tonight? Philip responded, it's half past ten. Oh, wow, you're right. The sun was down and the tree shone bright, glowing with salty, greasy delight. Harry said, hello, good tree. How are you doing? I need some bacon for smelling and chewing. I need bacon for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I need bacon to take away all of my sorrow. The tree said, kind boy, I'm doing quite well. I'll give you enough bacon to make you swell. And Harry said, thank you, good tree. I'll take it all. And he danced as he watched the bacon fall. Then Philip said, good tree, I am here too. I need enough bacon to fill up a zoo. I need bacon for my brothers, my mom and my dad. I need enough bacon so they won't be sad. The tree said, sweet child, I see you here. I'll give you enough bacon to last you all year. Philip said, thank you, good tree. That's insane. And he held up his bucket as the bacon rained. There was bacon to crunch and bacon to lick. The more they ate, the more they got thick. They stumbled home unaware of the trick that all that bacon would make them sick. They were stuck in bed with tummy aches for days, unable to go out with their friends to play. After a while, the boys returned, wanting the bacon that they had yearned. They were over their sickness and feeling quite well as they walked to the tree and began to yell. Good morning, good tree. How do you do? We need some bacon this morning for you. Good morning, Harry. I'm doing quite well. Would you like enough bacon to make you swell? 
No, thank you, good tree. That will not do. This morning for breakfast, I only need two. What about you, Philip? Good morning to you. Would you like enough bacon to fill up a zoo? No, thank you, good tree. Maybe one more than two. This morning for breakfast, I'll take just a few. Then the boys walked off, having learned their lesson as the tree reveled in his profession. Though the tree provides bacon to all the nation, bacon is best eaten in moderation. And that is the bacon tree. Great job, Harrison. Great job. I really love that book. Thank However, you. I think maybe the audience might want to know, what about for people who don't actually eat bacon? Do you have a book for us? I'm vegan. I don't eat bacon. Well, that is a good question. I do actually have a companion book to the bacon tree. It's called B is for bacon tree, bacon from A to Z. And it goes over all the different types of bacon. Uh, so you have, if you go all the way to V, and I can show you here. For those who are vegan, there is vegan bacon. And Thank for you, the Harrison. people <laughs> who don't like pork, there's turkey bacon. So yeah, many different types of bacon. Thank you so much for that, Harrison. And if you all have any other questions for Harrison, he will be joining us for the panel. So stay tuned, write those questions down, and we'll see you in a bit, Harrison. See ya. See ya. So for our next reader, we have Miss Serenity, and she is actually a 12-year-old teen. And she wrote her own book, and her book was published September 15th, of last year 2021 so welcome serenity she is also a native of charlotte and we don't see that much <laughs> welcome welcome take hey. it away so my name is serenity i'm 12 years old and i'm going to be reading my first book that i ever published what will i be okay. what will i be written and illustrated by serenity Rankin. There comes a time when you start to think, what will I be when I grow up? My mom told me I could be anything I want. Who knew making this decision would be so tough? Will I be a nurse wearing different colored scrubs working 12-hour days to help save the world? Will I be a famous actress known near and far? I'll win awards and have my own Hollywood star. Will I be a hairstylist working in my own salon? I'll be braiding, weaving, or using a curling iron. Will I be a professional dancer creating all the new moves? I'll be hired to express stories and ideas through dance any way that I choose. Will I be a singer that's heard all over the radio? I'll be on billboards and magazines and sold out shows. Will I be in author writing classes that will be read for years to come? I'll be on the New York Times bestsellers more than once. Will I be a seamstress and create my own brand? I'll make my mark in the fashion industry by the work of my hands. Will I be an entrepreneur following my big dream wholeheartedly? I'll believe in myself even when others don't believe in me. You can be the president, a truck driver, a police officer, or a firefighter. Never let anyone tell you a job is just for a man because gender doesn't matter. There are so many more way, there are so many more things that you can become. A teacher, a preacher, literally anything you want. It's never too early or too late to start. Find what you love and give it your heart. Remember to work hard, but pray even harder. If you get knocked down, get up with grace. You're granted another chance to win the race. Chin held high and never look down. It's your work, Queen. Adjust your crown. Thank you so much, Serenity. That was really, really good. So I know you're welcome. The audience wants to know, what will you be? Have you decided yet? <laughs> um... Maybe a doctor or a nurse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And another question. You're a teenager or a preteen. So how does it feel to have com accomplished this huge goal of writing a book at 12? Well, when you're in fifth grade, 
How does that make you feel? Um, it makes me feel like I can do anything that I put my mind to. Yes, and that's very inspiring. And I hope you inspired some of our teens out there as well as our adults. Thank you so much, Serenity, for joining us. Okay, thank you all so much for joining us so far, sticking with us. Our last reader is going to be Miss Shakita Richardson, and she has been an educator for the past 14 years. She is a firm believer in teaching and natural affirmations. So please take it away, Shakita. Tell us more. Hi, I'm Shakita Richardson, and I am the author of a children's affirmation book titled, I Am, I Can, and I Will. I am enough. I am pretty. I am tough. I am strong. I am able, I am able to do what I put my mind to. I am bold. I love me. I love my hair. I love my lips. I love my nose. I love my shoulders. I love my smile. I love my teeth. I have sharp eyes. I have a kind smile. I have solid cheekbones. I have the strength to endure anything. I have the courage to stand up for anything. I have the mind to achieve whatever my heart desires. I can have my own style. I can be an attorney. I can be a doctor. I can be a teacher. I can be the president. I can be a senator. I can be a police officer. I can be a banker. I can be a builder. I can be an artist. I can be a baseball player. I can be a football player. I can be a basketball player. I can be a tennis player. I can be a golfer. I will be successful. I am free to be me. I will be whatever I'm destined to be because I'm free to be me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shakita. I love that book and I love positive affirmations. Can you possibly tell me a little bit more of your inspiration for writing this book? I know you've been an educator um, for 14 years, but what made you write an affirmations type book? So I'm a natural affirmer. I'm just even for adults. Um, it's just something that comes natural. I feel like as an African-American woman, you know, there's just things that you need to pour into people and people pour into you. Um, but I have a son that has alopecia and he struggled with knowing, you know, who he was or how he looked. So I affirmed him that you're 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 handsome, you know, um, you're, you're special, you know. Um, because when he when he looked in the mirror, all he saw was his hair was gone. You know, he didn't see that he was amazing. He didn't see that, you know, I can be these things even despite of what um, I look like on the outside. Mm -hmm. So um, being a teacher and being a mom, um, affirming is something that I feel like needs to be poured into all children. Thank you. Thank you for answering that. Do you have a go to affirmation that you um, do for yourself or for your kids, your students and for your son? 
I do. I have my students in my class. We um, affirm each other. Well, we have a, a list of affirmations that we do every day, every um, day during our morning meeting. Um, and my kids, it's just whatever, you know, um, you're handsome, you're great, you know. And for me, I, I just, that's just, it's just natural, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, Shakita. Um, I love that reading. If you all have any questions for Shakita, please make sure that you jot them down um, as she will be joining us in our panel and you'll be able to ask more. Thank you, Shakita. And now back to you, Jasmine. Uh, that was awesome. Um, thank you, authors, so much for um, for those amazing reads. I love seeing books that that feature us and that we can connect to. Um, so we're about to get into the panel, but before we do that, I want y'all to get your your questions together. I'm gonna throw them in the chat. If you have any questions specifically for anyone, um, or if you have questions for everyone overall, get ready to put those in the chat. But I did want to use this time to plug a couple things with the library. Um, so. Keep in mind, we are Black History Month, but we are Black History all year long. So with that being said, uh, Reading in Color is the program that the library has and has had since 2016, which has been highlighting books um, that feature characters of color. So we host book clubs, but we also offer um, Reading in Color shorts. And this can be found on the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library's YouTube page, specifically under the Reading in Color playlist. And what these are, um, they're, they're perfect for parents that ask, hey, Hey, I'm looking for a book for my so-and-so year old and I want to find a book that features a character of color for my 10 year old. Well, what we do is we, we update these every month with recommended reads for all ages for you. Um, so we do that. And then we also um, provide library resources. So during this time, um, this started during the pandemic. It's a lot of virtual learning. Uh, fatigued over here as a parent, um, but we have uh, resources and we've always had resources. So we highlight different um, library resources that can help your child during virtual learning, but also uh, while they're in school during the summer. So please make sure you check out the Reading in Color playlist on the Charlotte Mecklenburg Library's YouTube page that is updated monthly. And our PSA that featured our amazing teens is on there as well, as well as the all of the panelists and authors from tonight, their bios are on a video on there as well. Um, also, Ms. Shakita that just read did an amazing blog that is featured on the library's website. So if you haven't had a chance to look at that, please view that. And one of our panelists, Ms. Charlita Hatch, also has one. So please view that when you all get a chance. But just check out www.cmlibrary.org for more uh, resources, any of um, any of the books that we feature in the Reading in Color shorts, and to get connected with our um, panelists. So now we are going to go into our last half for tonight is our panel. So we are going to invite back our readers, but also some additional panelists. So please help me to welcome Sherelle Bates, Sanaa Wilkins, our team, and Sana was also featured in our PSA, um, Miss Dr. Janica Lewis. Dr. Jenica Lewis um, joined us for our first annual celebration of the National African American Reading. So she is back, as well as Miss Charlita Hatch and Lil Richie. Those who also was um, joined our first annual celebration last year. So if you didn't get a chance to check that out, it's still on um, YouTube on the Charlotte McMurray Library's page. Um, and then joining us again from earlier is Miss Shakita Richardson that just left us and Bacon, Harrison, <laughs> Martin. So welcome everyone back and thank you all for joining us. So before we jump into the panel, I do want to give those that just joined us that did not read an opportunity to introduce yourselves to the audience. Uh, what's your name? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Something just real quick, just so that they can connect. I'm putting y'all on the spot, by the way, but just so that they can connect with you before they start asking you all questions. Tell us um, your name. Um, I'm going to just call you out based on my screen. Um, Miss Sherelle. Sherelle, Sherelle, I don't hear you. Can y'all hear her? Okay. Sherelle, we're going to come back to you. Sanaa, introduce yourself. You're mute.
You muted yourself. Since I am 15 years old, um, I created a film called Beauty Mark, and I'm just glad to be here. Awesome. Dr. Janica Lewis. Good evening. I'm Dr. Janica Lewis. I am an African-American literature professor in the Department of English at UNC Charlotte, and I direct the Center for the Study of the New South, and I'm a children's book author and research Black women and girls uh, stories as well. Awesome. Lil Richie. What's up, everyone? I go by the name of Lil Richie. I am an artist and author of two books, Big Brother, Big Shoes, my first children's book. And a note in the second book is The Notre Man Go Go Harder, which is a motivational book. And I'm also a brand ambassador for the Charlotte Hornets. Awesome. Thank you for being here. And last but certainly not least, y'all, Miss Charlita wrote an amazing blog. Please go check it out. Um, Charlita Hatch. Hi, everyone. I am Charlita Hatch. And because you're putting us on the spot, I want to give a shout out to my almost five year old son, Mark, who was my inspiration of writing Black Boy Joy. His birthday's on Sunday. Um, and so I am an author, but a mom first and a passionate mom that's on a quest to change the narrative of Black boys in America through children's books. Right. I love it. Charlita, my son's birthday is on Sunday, too. So we we over here connected on happy that. birthday. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, before we get started, I do want to say I saw in the chat, Shakita, while you was reading, somebody said that we need an adult book like that. So keep that in mind on your on your future endeavors that we that we need that. I loved it, by the way. But I am going to pass the mic back to Miss Sydney, and we are going to start our panel. Um, as we're going, everyone, please add your questions into the chat. Hi everyone. So the first question is going to be for everyone. I will call you name by name um, so that we all can kind of get used to this. So our first question is, what is one of the first books that you read that featured a character that looked like you? And we can go ahead and start with you, Sherelle, and you can also do your introduction at this time. Okay, hi, I hope everyone can hear me. I was having a little yeah, it's technical good. difficulty. Um, I'm Sherelle Bates. I'm the children's book author of Wooly Bully, and I'm really excited to just be kind of share my feedback, but I'm really glad to be here today. Um, the first book that I remember seeing as a child that had any black person on it at all was A Raisin in the Sun. Now I was in middle school, so the entire elementary school process, I did not see anybody that looked like me so i remember just being excited like oh, there's black people on the cover and though it wasn't like a it wasn't a uh, illustrated children's book or anything like that i was just so excited like this exists this is a thing so i'm hoping that in 2022 it doesn't take someone till middle school to see themselves depicted in literary art Thank you for that. And as we move on to Sanai, maybe she can answer that question. Sanai, did you see a book that featured a character that looked like you before middle school or was it after? Um, It was after middle school. So can you tell us what book that was? And after middle school, after middle school, when? Um, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, can you come back to me? Yes, I can. <laughs> Dr. Jenica. I don't know if this was the first book, but my first grade teacher gave me Nikki Giovanni's Spin a Soft Black Song. Um, I won a poetry contest, and that was the book I won. And Nikki Giovanni is still one of my favorite authors. And her book, Rosa, I have my Rosa Parks shirt on, um, is an excellent book, too. Thank you. And Harrison? Uh, for me, the first book I saw with a person of color on it would have been when I was around four or five years old in kindergarten is Ezra Jack Keats' A Snowy Day. I really love that book. And <laughs> I, hey, there it is right there. But yeah, I, I love that book. I I think we bought like two copies for my daughter. But for me, yeah, that's, that's the first uh, book I saw. And that's so interesting and amazing because we hyped that book up at the library so much. So to hear a African-American male say that that's the first book they saw. And Harrison, you're not that much older than I am, but it's still like with that, with the generation that we're in, that's, that's empower, that's impactful. Shakita. Oh my goodness. That was my book, Harrison. 
The Snowy Day. Oh my goodness. This was this is still one of my favorite books. Um, and I love his little red jacket. And my little boy has a little red jacket because I loved his little red jacket so much. But this was the very first um book that I remember seeing an African American um in it. Thank you, Shakita. Little Richie. Um, one of the first books that I can remember early on that that featured a person that looked like me, I would have to say Kickoff by Tiki um, Barber. Um, mm -hmm. And this was in middle school, of course, because um, it wasn't so many books that I had to really choose from at an early age. I really didn't see that many books. And I feel like that is what more so inspired me to create a book of my own so that I could help put more out there into the atmosphere for other kids that were like me who didn't find anything to read mm -hmm. so that I can have something out there for them to read. Thank you, Richie. And mm. Ms. Shailita. So the book I remember will probably be late elementary school, so maybe fourth or fifth grade. It's called Striped Ice Cream by, John, by Joan Lowe. And it's a story of a single mom who had four children and they didn't have a lot, but every time it was their birthday, they got to pick whatever kind of ice cream they mm -hmm. wanted. And so she was able to pick the striped ice cream, which is chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. Mm -hmm. um, but she thought she wasn't going to be able to get it because her mom didn't have the money and they surprised her. So that was the first book I remember of a black girl. Um, That's so cool. You can go, Sanai, I'm sorry. Um, I have a book that I found out after high school. Um, it's called Flower Garden. I don't know if you can see mm -hmm. it. Um, it's called mm -hmm. Flower Garden, and it's about her mother who gives her a garden box for her birthday. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to jump in and say, uh, so I really don't remember. So I was a very, very avid reader. I know I'm not a panelist, but I just want to add in. <laughs> um, I, I was a very avid reader growing up. So um, I I was really connected with books so much so that my mom would use it as a punishment. Like she would take books away. I, no, I'm not saying this to be cheesy or, or get nothing. Like for real. Like my mom would be like, no, you can't. So, but I do specifically remember the American Girl series. Um, and I remember it took me forever to find, is it Abby? Is, is it Abby? Yeah. It took me forever to find Ooh, Abby. Yeah. And um when I found it, I was like so connected just because she looked like me, but she was so poor and just struggling. And I was like, gosh, why does Abby got to be struggling like this? Can Abby live like these other people? And I, I remember, obviously, you know, at a young age, I didn't connect it like that. But I do remember being like, I remember specifically that they were living in this cold house that didn't have heat and was struggling around Christmas time. And I was like, dang, and like it was so sad, but I wanted to read a story with a character that I could connect to, but I enjoyed the other ones better because it wasn't so down and depressing. And so um, that's one of the things that, that I think is very important in children's literature is not only to feature characters of color, but to feature normal characters of color because we live normal mm -hmm. lives around here, okay? Everybody mm -hmm. not living without heat. So, um, you know, to feature characters that that children can relate to and that children that are not of color can see that we are normal people. And so, you know, I just I, I, I want to make sure I say that not just featuring character and representation like, yes, that definitely matters. But representing us in a way that we're normalized, just like every other race out there. Um, so I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take over the pen. I may answer another question, but I'm going to throw it back to you, Sydney. No, no, no. It's it's no problem, Jasmine. And I would say that um, I grew up in the libraries. I don't remember the first book that I saw, but I do remember my mom taking us to the library and really making sure that we were reading and not reading for punishment, but just reading and doing book reports just to build up. And that's ultimately why I became a librarian. So that's my dream. And I'm literally living in my dream right now. Um, and that's just God. So I shout out to my mom. She's on here. Hey, mom. <laughs> But hey, yes, hey, so that, Sydney just got a promotion to a librarian. I hate to put her on the spot, but she just got a promotion, y'all. So give her some claps in the um in the chat. That's big major moves. Uh black librarians are not it's not yeah. the popular thing. It's About not what you less than 10%. Yeah. But we're gonna get back to the panel though. <laughs> So my favorite, well, not my favorite book, the first book that I saw or I remember was the Blue Fruit series when I was in high school. So, um, and that just showed a lot of representation for African-Americans, good and bad. But I just want to say that in high school is what I really remember, but I do want it to start 
younger. And I do want uh, our kids to see books that look like them even at a younger age. And like Jasmine said, that doesn't result to like struggle or relate to struggle. So our next question is going to be for our teens. So as a teen of color, do you gravitate more to books that feature books with minority characters or what type of books do you gravitate to more? And we can start with you, Little Richie. Um, I would say I try to put myself in an author's situation, like in the author's point of view when reading a book and not necessarily the reader's point of view, because I want to be able to get the best of both worlds. So to answer your question, I understand that to a certain extent that, you know, I have to focus on the minority characters and understand where his whole, you know, dialogue is coming from. But I I genuinely feel as if the narrative can be changed. And what I mean by that is that I, I wouldn't necessarily say I gravitate towards those books, but um, I'm able to put myself in, into those situations so I can be able to describe these certain situations in my own words. So I feel like it's kind of in the middle with me. Thank you. And Sanai? Um, I normally, when I read books, I'm normally on the author's side. Um, I like to look at and discover, you know, um, what they were thinking and the tone um, of the book and um, things like that. Um, kind of what Lil Richie said, too. I'm kind of in the middle, but I think the author's side of the story um, is more fun and um, interesting to look at. Thank you for that. So as you keep mentioning, well, as you mentioned the authors, we can go ahead and switch over to our authors. So as an author, what are some things that you do to promote minority characters in children's literature? Sherelle, we can start with you. Okay, so I can use an example. My book, Wooly Bully. So even though the protagonists and antagonists in the story are actually insects, I gave them humanistic features. So... Um, like the the um, the main bully, he ha he's a dark skin uh, insect, and then the principal is a dark skin principal, and so I, even though because when I looked at the research and even um, animals in non uh, non uh, books about characters that aren't even people, there are more books of them even more than black people. So I was like, okay, well, I like the idea of using uh, animals and insects. However, I don't want to forget my, I want people to still look and say, hey, that insect looks like a black guy. So uh, <laughs> I really was able to kind of conform both of those. And I thought it was really, really great. And also even on the back of my book that it has like my picture on it. So when you're learning a little bit about me, it's like, hey, the author and illustrator of this book is black and I see some representation and it really just, I just don't want any parts of the story to be missed simply because it's like, Hey, I can't connect because this doesn't seem relevant to me. So it's a part of, part of humor, but it's like, no, we're going to get our uh, beautiful, beautiful people of color recognized in part of the uh, product of this book. So I thought that was really great, but I think that's very important. And I also saw that in the publishing in the U S book publishing as a whole, 79% of authors, illustrators, publishers are white. So it's like, okay, by being black alone and being an author and an illustrator, we are now, we are now putting our plate, putting ourselves in a place where we have a place to be seen. And we are now reflecting um, our literature is going to start to we're going to be able to see us in that and it's and i can now understand why the amount of characters it didn't even matter if you're a protagonist antagonist or if you're a supporting character um why we haven't been able to look at these books and see us and i'm like okay well enough of us haven't been in this field but we're changing that i started that everyone here in this panel has started that so i'm just excited to see what that's look, going to look like moving forward Shara, I do want to ask um, a follow-up question to that real quick before we um, go to the other authors, because you didn't get a chance to, to read your actual book. Can you tell the audience uh, your the title of your book that you're referencing and the uh, kind of a synopsis of what it's about? Yes. So my book is called Wooly Bully, and it is about 
uh, direct confrontation, bullying, and cyberbullying. So overall, it's Wooly, Wooly, he is the biggest bully in school, but he gets to experience being bullied himself. Now, who would want to bully the biggest bully in school? So it's very, very interesting that you're coming from a place of not being a nice guy yourself, but you also kind of seeing how it is to have that shoe on the other foot and see when it feels like for what you've done to other people. Um, but it's direct confrontation from just school bullying and then also the the new approach of, well, a more common approach, I should say, of cyberbullying. So social media, a lot of that. So just really covering all those bases. And it was essentially, I was motivated to write the book because I was cyberbullied. I had gone, I had gone viral in 2018. And after that, a lot of the effects afterwards were a lot of trolling and up to, uh, I experienced that from half a million people of just being negative and, and cyberbullying. So I really wanted to come from both angles of what that feels like. But in the world where technology is going to continue to grow, it's like there will be people who will, it's, we're going to see more cyberbullying and trolling. And unfortunately, these were adults. These weren't even like children. Like, I'm 34 years old. So these were adults that were still bullying. So it's like, this needs to get to everybody. And if we can reach adults, children, like we can make a change in that capacity. So I wanted to make sure that nothing was left behind, but me speaking as being an adult, bullied as an adult, like I never experienced as a child, but as an adult, I was like, okay, we need to make a change and just take a firm stance about that. Well, thank you so much uh, for giving us a little bit of background, being a little bit uh, transparent with us as well as the audience. And I, I love the fact that you turned that into a learning opportunity through literacy um, for children. So thank you so much for that. And um, I believe that that book is available on Amazon. Um, yes, so, the book is sold globally. So it's everywhere that books are sold as well awesome. as in multiple countries as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. And then I'm, I'm sorry, not going to take over. Okay. Sydney, um, same <laughs> question for Dr. Jenica. Mm hmm so in terms of seeing stories, and I do want to shout out the, the librarians because my mom always had me in the library too. And there were librarians who looked like me who made sure I had had books that, you know, with people who look like me too. So in my um, books and my first children's book, uh, Brown All Over, uh, was based on my son who was then too discovering we were brown all over. And he was really like excited and delighted to be brown on his whole body. And so I wanted to write a book that, that celebrated that. And then also in uh, Bo Nia Marie Passes the Test, a little girl who is brown, who is an athlete and who is ex learning to excel in school, even though, you know, tests can be challenging. And so I wanted not just to have, um, African-American characters, but different types of stories that show, you know, how we succeed and how we, you know, overcome challenges. Not that the challenges aren't there, but, you know, that we can, uh, we can do pretty much whatever we put our minds to. And so um, that's what I try to do in my stories. And my last children's book was actually my dad's true story about my grandmother taking him and my aunt to see Dr. Martin Luther King when they lived in Albany, Georgia. And they had to walk because my grandmother didn't want them riding segregated buses. And so he was eight years old and he just remembers seeing Dr. King and saying, oh, Dr. King is tired too, just like me because I had to walk all this way. And so just, you know, not just being in books, but different types of stories that, you know, remind us um, of our strength and that, that we do overcome a lot of obstacles. And Harrison, thank you, Dr. Janica. Uh, so for me, uh, to promote uh, minority characters in books, I basically base a lot of characters off of either myself or people I know. Uh, and like in my first uh, book, The Bacon Tree, this this little guy is uh, is basically me. He's I made him tall, just like me. At the time, I had a high top fade, so of course I gave him a high top fade. So I really wanted him to look like a cartoon yeah. version of me. And when I wrote, it's actually my third book. The little girl on the cover is based off of my daughter. So that basically, and I got a couple other books uh, that I'm working on. But basically, yeah, friends, family, myself. If I can put them into books, I can have the world, because my books are so globally, experience the people that I see every day. Uh, so. Thank you for that. 
And just to reiterate the question, as an author, what are some things that you do to promote minority characters in children's literature? Shakita. Um, in my book, I included, I tried to include um, like all ethnicities, but on the cover of my book, there is a little brown girl and a little brown boy um, mm -hmm. to get the audience started on, you know, I see a book and there's, you know, people of um, color on the, on the cover of the book. And um, I wonder what this book is about because it has, I am, I can, and I will, and there are black people on the cover of the book. So just, um, it was important for me to include a little black girl with big hair. My hair is normally big, but it's not today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, to um, have a little black girl with big hair because that's what, that's, that's, that's the way we look. Thank you. Lil Richie. So in my book, I include, well, this is me on the cover. So obviously mm -hmm. you can see a guy with shades, you know, and um, the necklaces or whatever, <laughs> kind of showing a part of the hip hop culture as me being a, a rapper and everything. But on the back of the book, this is, let me fix the camera. Uh, this is mm -hmm. me and my other two little brothers. Um, and it features my parents in it as well. So I made sure it was very important to tell my side of the story and get their point of view in the book, um, telling about how it is in a um, Black family household. And really, basically, that's what I did in that book. It's about the importance of being an older role model. So me showing my little brothers and the right guidance, showing them the right steps to follow in. And basically, that's so much of what the book is about, Big Brother, Big Shoes. And one uh, one thing Oops, I feel sorry. as if we can, no, it's all good. One thing I feel as if we can promote right now that we have mm -hmm. to our access that we didn't have back then is social media. We have to utilize mm -hmm. the tools that we can use on social media, Facebook mm -hmm. ads, Instagram ads, what Google ads. You literally can promote your book in so many different ways right now. So that is a big tool that we can use to our advantage. Thank you, Lil Richie. And thank you. You can wrap it up, Ms. Charlita. Thank you. So when I started, you know, writing Black Boy Joy, it really was because I was reading books to my son, Mark, who I was reading the books and seeing books that featured athletes and civil rights activists. And I thought, OK, maybe these are just the books that we bought. And then I did some research and found that less than 10 percent of children's books that was back in 2017 featured people of color. And so then I started to think about how do you foster a love of reading? Right. When you're wanting to promote reading with your children, to be honest, Mark doesn't care about slavery. Right. He likes mm -hmm. the trains and the red ball. He loves his mama. And so if we really want to create an app, a opportunity where our children really love reading, it's like we need to have images that reflect that and stories that reflect that. So to your point, Jasmine, do you really want to sit and just read about slaves all day? Right. That's a component. Right. There's a component of people who don't have heat. That's a component. But there are so many stories in the black experience that we're not monolithic and we deserve to tell those. And so Black Boy Joy is a story of a mother who loves her son. And it follows you all the way from birth to college. And I thought it was important to have images of your mom growing with you, affirming you along the journey and showing that you also as a black boy don't have to just do sports. And if you do sports, maybe it's not basketball and football. Maybe it's lacrosse. Maybe you're a baker and it's OK to be who you are authentically and to see those images penetrated in our homes. The other thing I did was write Black Boy Joy Christmas Countdown because so many of the books that feature Black families at Christmas really are around Kwanzaa. And although we recognize Kwanzaa, we also celebrate Christmas and we have Black Santa and we do gingerbread houses and we do caroling. And just, again, sending those images out um, to show how we can relate and not just for Black kids, but for all kids to be able to see that a kid of color is just like me. And that's how we humanize the experience. And that's why we promote the images that we promote. Um. Thank you so much for that. We got a couple of audience questions. Um, and this is, so the first question is for authors. I'll just let a couple of you all answer it so that we can get to the other ones. So 
if you want to answer it, kind of just, just give me a raise so I know you want to answer it. Um, so the first question is, what advice do you have for aspiring authors, children, um, children and adult authors? What advice do you have? Who wants to take a stab at that? Um, Dr. Janica, um, go ahead. If you have a story, write it down before you even go, you know, looking for publishers and there's support out there, write your story down so you have it, so you don't forget it. Um, and then look for people to help you tell your story, but you're the only one that can tell the story in your head the way you have it. And that's for children and for adult authors. You know what you're trying to say. Um, and then you can look around for publishers uh, and editors if you don't self-publish. Awesome, and uh, Ms. Charlita? So the one thing I would like to point out is that Black Boy Joy was illustrated by a sophomore in high school. She was at South Mech. And I think similar to Sanai, like to be able to say, I can do this and to be able to, uh, to illustrate your own book. Now she's a sophomore, maybe even a junior at SCAD, which is the Savannah College of Art Design, which is a major art institute. And so she just took a leap of faith and we worked together and partnered on it. So there is no age that's too small for you to live out your dreams. Don't let anybody tell you that you're too young to do it. Like Dr. Janica said, you own your story, you own your drawings, and you go for it and pursue your dreams. Thank you. And Charlita, so Sana is our is is our team. She's not the author. So the author, I think you think about Serenity, but and I think a couple of people in the chat got confused. So Sana is our team. And, and I asked her to be here today just so she could kind of give the team perspective of, of of literacy that's out there, what she's experiencing and what she sees as a team. Um, so keep that in mind as your questions come through. It's specifically for her because I saw another question about the book. So Serenity was the author, the the, the teen author from earlier. Sana is our team for the team rep team representation um up in here for the children uh, for the team books um so but i do have another question and charlita i think you actually touched on this um so the question is um about your illustrations for your book so do you illustrate um your own i, I know a couple of you talked about that um or do you interview people to determine what's gonna work like what is your when you wrote your books how did you guys do, uh, what's the process for illustrations and i actually would like to know this as well what's the process for getting an illustrator um charlie do you want to go ahead and answer that I'll go first just because I kind of ended it. And I'll just say that um, I reached out to one of my girlfriends and I said, I'm looking for an illustrator. And because I think I wrote a children's book, but I'm not sure. And she said, my stepdaughter is can illustrate. And I knew how old she was. And I was like, no, I mean like a real <laughs> illustrator. But together we storyboarded. So I felt like I helped to kind of do a storyboard is like basically taking each kind of page or line in the book and talking about what the illustrations look would look like. And then she brought them to life. Um, and she had a certain style of drawing. So I also learned that there was different styles of drawing. And so she brought that style and we agreed to like that being the the style for the Black Boy Joy series. But um it it she owns the uh, images. Um, they are licensed specifically to me to use, but she can also use, you know, use them as the owner. She could never sell the images to someone else. So that's also something to think about as you're looking at the terms. Um, but it was it is a process to find someone to match your style, to match the style of writing. And that also will be able to attract children specifically um, as they're looking at the pictures because not all of our readers can read. And so they should be able to see the story um, and tell you the stories, even if they don't know the words. Thank you. And um, I don't want to put you all y'all on the spot, but Shakita, was your process kind of... <laughs> Was your process kind of the same or did you did you create your own? Um, so what I did was, um, like I said, I affirmed my students in my class and my own kids. So I just kept a note in my phone on what I would say to my kids every single day. I joined a Facebook group. It's called, I think, Black Authors or something. And they kind of collaborate in there and you can find an author. They'll 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 tell you like piece by piece, where to start, where to end, how to self-publish. Um, if you need to do any editing, they'll, you know, they'll spit out editors to you. Um, so I just joined a Black, um, it's it's a Black author's Facebook group. It's, that's, that's, that's it. But it all started on my little iPhone. 
I would like to add, jump in here. So I am the illustrator of my book. Here it is. <laughs> I try to fix it in there. So I authored and illustrated my book. I did it for uh, initially due to a lack of resources, but I was very committed to uh, completing this book. I was like, I wrote it in a very short amount of time and I'm like, I don't have the funds for a publisher. I don't know where to go. I don't have, you know, any kind of book deals. It seemed like I was really just kind of out here on my own. And I was like, well, you know what, write, just draw what you think the story should look like. Just like the words came to you, take your time. Like I'm not a professional artist or in, by any means of that, but the way that it came together and being able to use like Adobe Sketch, which is now Fresco, and being able to just like literally piece of paper, draw it out, trace it in Adobe uh, Sketch at the time and put it together. I physically put it together as a, a self-published on Blurb. And like, I was just like, I have to do every step of this. And it still got to exactly where I wanted it to be, even with all of that. So the lack of resources, not being able to publish or, or illustrate or anything, none of those stopped me. It was just like, I want to get the story out here. And the level of determination was the level of distance that I was able to go in spite of um, not having uh, the money that I would have liked to, uh, to promote this project. I, I love using, utilizing um, what, what you have, doing research to make it happen on your own. I, I love that. I love if, if, if you if you can get the, uh, the the illustrator and if you have the resources and to be able to put someone else on. I love how Charlita uh, you, utilized the student. So I love the different avenues. Um, last one to answer this so we can get to the other ones is Harris. Harrison, you had your hand up? I did. I okay. did. Uh, just quick. Well, for me, uh, what I did, I reached out to somebody I know. First, I reached out to my sister-in-law because she's an artist, uh, but she has a lot of kids, so it just got hard for her. So I reached out to somebody I pretty much know my entire life. And what I do, like, I'll sketch out what I think it should look like. And like with my uh, my third book, I Don't Want a Pet, like, I would hand him the sketches. Hey, this is what I think the book should look like. This is how it should flow. And then he pretty much sends it back looking pretty. And then I put the book together like so. So, yeah. That's basically how, how I get it done. Awesome. Awesome. Thank y'all so much for that. Um, we got a lot of questions in the chat, but I did want to throw it back to Cindy for one question for the teens and it will go, we'll come back to the chat. So teens, just to give y'all um, a chance to speak up so that we can just acknowledge that you are here and we just thank you for your time. I just want to ask, what is your favorite book? Um, that features a character of color. It can be a children's book. It can be a teen book. Um, it's just totally up to you. So now you want to go first? Um, yes, I can. Um, a book that I like is um, The Hate You Give. Um, even though it is sad, it's a very interesting book, and it also has a theme to it, and it's just a lesson overall. Um, yeah, that I would say that's the book. Yes, I like. I enjoyed the hate you give. Um, have you heard of Concrete Rose? That was another book she wrote. Um, no, I haven't heard of Concrete Rose. You gotta look that up. It's on Hoopla I too, will. and so if you like um audio books, it's on Hoopla as well. All right. Good. And little Richie, what about you? Um, I'm in the middle of a split decision right now. Um, mm -hmm. between two books, one which I'm currently reading, Will by Will Smith. It's a great book. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anybody, anyone else in here is reading that book, but it's a great book. Uh, it's really an autobiography, so it's him telling his story. And uh, the second book, I would say, is Tears of a Tiger. Um, mm -hmm. Very good book. That story is, it touches based on the main character. He's a character of color, and he lost his friend um, in a car in a car accident. He was the one actually driving, so he's faced with grief and many obstacles and trying to get over the fact because he feels guilty with mm -hmm. his best friend's death on his conscience. So that's a really good book to read as well. Tears of a Tiger and Will by Will Smith is one of my two favorites. Thank you awesome. for that. I have a, uh, so now I don't mean to put you, I'm not going to put you on the spot, is it? But the the Hate You Give, did y'all read, did you read that in school or did you just read it on your own? Because I know like when it first came out, it was like a really big controversy with the school system as whether they were going to read it there or keep it out. Yeah, so we actually read it in school. That was the first time I read it. Um, maybe I forgot what grade, but yes, we read it in school. 
Awesome. Um, okay. I didn't hear about the controversy, but it seemed like it was okay to read. In school. Yeah. So there were, it was basically kind of a question of because of the content. And I think that there's like a couple of cuss words in the book. There was a question of whether it was appropriate enough to have featured in the schools or not. Um, I know eventually they, they agreed to keep it in the schools, but I didn't know like if you, if your experience was having it in the school or outside of it. Yeah. Now that I do remember, um, a permission slip did have to come home for the parent to sign. I do. Remember. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Thank you for that. Okay. Back to the chat. Y'all blowing these questions up in the chat. Okay. So, um, this is a good question. So as far as the book titles, the book titles, um, I can't add those to the chat for the authors. Um, but at the end and on our reading and color, um, youtube page there the author's bios are going to go by it is quick but if you go on the youtube page after this their books are also um featured on each of their their bios it's a cover of the book so you'll be able to see it um so this next question is i think sherelle touched on it but is it more difficult to publish books that feature people of color uh who wants to take a stab at that uh, i'll get back i will say no i feel that uh, one, I feel like to an extent it's my responsibility, especially when I know that there's such a gap between depicting people of color, period, that if I have any opportunity, I want to slide it in any way that I can so that we have some representation, even though we are, again, on the representation side as authors and illustrators and whatever that looks like. Um, but it's just to encourage anybody like someone asking the questions um like how do you get started like maybe they had a book on their mind maybe they started something and they just needed that little bit of either go and sh reassurance or you know motivation to do it but there's really isn't a formula to it but it really is like i feel that to an extent we're all doing each other just a great service by even showing up as characters showing up um as the authors, as the illustrators, whatever that looks like. Um, and I'm just, I just am excited to see so much more of it. So there's plenty of room and I'm excited to see how that grows. And, and all the, and I, every time I'm like looking at my kids are avid readers. They're like, I feel like even though I was an author, but they were avid readers before that even happened. But like open, every time we're like looking and we're like at Barnes and Nobles or wherever, well, pre COVID, but we used to go all the time, but um, it was just great to just be like, like looking and just, it seemed like there was so much, it was a lot more easier to find, um, characters that were black or, uh, people of color than I recall as being younger. So it, I, I feel like we just got to keep it up. Keep, just keep that same energy. Awesome. Um, Dr. Jenica. Uh, Tony Morrison, who is one of my favorite authors, said um, that, you know, if there's a story you want to see that you don't see, you have to write it. And so I think I've been so excited to see more books um, by African-American authors and African-American illustrators. My illustrator, Cameron Wilson, I knew from high school and I, you know, followed him and he's been illustrating a lot more books. And so we're seeing um, just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much out there. We just have to look further sometimes than, than what we see. Thank you. And, and I want to um, just say the way that y'all keep talking about how you got your illustrators, especially for your for you teens, networking, networking, networking is so important. Please, please network and make every opportunity when you have opportunities like this to connect with people because you never know how you can pull on them or how they can be a resource for you in the future. Networking is huge. And when I was a teen, I didn't understand it. Um, but it is it is really imperative that you network to be able to pull someone that you went to high school with to to draw your pictures of your book is is giving them an opportunity, but you an opportunity as well. So networking is huge. Um, we are coming down. Oh, Charlita, go ahead. So I would like to offer maybe a different perspective where it, it's not hard to publish with the tools that you have, whether you're self publish, you know, finding a publisher and, you know, all of that. I find that it's after the publishing where it may be a little difficult. So as you start to think about the statistics where, you know, even now there are still more books about animals or trucks than people of color. And as I worked to try to get my books into different bookstores, even here locally, I was told like, 
you know, this is only going to attract a small demographic. But if you are a bunny rabbit, like I could definitely get your book in the store. Right. And so it, it there is still, I think, a sentiment out there that if it's a, a, a predominantly white character or animal or truck, that's for everybody. But some people do feel like a book like Black Boy Joy is only for black boys, even sometimes black you know, parents of black girls will say, well, I don't have a son. I have a daughter. And it's like, you know, books are for everyone. They teach us different things. Um, and I don't think we co like have a, a culturally aware mindset um, overall about that. And so, again, you can see Elsa and Frozen and everybody gets that book. But then you see books that we all authored and it's like, OK, well, that's just for a certain demographic. So to your question was about publishing, but I think it kind of moves beyond publishing of getting the books out to the masses. And I, the data shows that there's still there's still a gap. Um, thank you so much for for that perspective, um, Charlita. Um, Shakita. This question is for you from the chat. OK, so have you read your book, the book that you read? Have you read it to your students? And if so, um, how has that book affected their social and emotional habits or interest in reading? I have. And it's actually on my board um, for them to grab at any time. Um, but some of the affirmations that are on my that are in my book, we say those daily. Um, and the I am, I can, and I will that is on my wall in my classroom as well. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And, um, how, how has that, like, did you notice a difference when you introduced that? Cause I'm, I mean, obviously you get new kids every year. So yeah. do you notice a difference? Um, because a lot of teachers are not doing positive affirmations with their kids. Um, you know, you know, some of them is like, Hey, sit down, come get this worksheet done. And so did you notice a difference by you taking the time to do that with your students, um, especially through a book um, with their behavior? Yes. So um, our last um, affirmation that we go through as a class is I can do anything. And when I tell you, like my kids know what comes next. And when they get to, to that, I can do anything. They're like, I can't do anything. So I asked them. Do you think you can do anything? You know, what are some things that you may not have been able to do yesterday that you can do today um, to get them just thinking about what 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 can you do? And they're kindergarten, granted, but you still know what you can do at kindergarten. And we're learning how to subtract as kindergartners. They may not have known how to subtract coming in today, but when they left today, maybe we can subtract by drawing pictures or we can subtract by using manipulatives, but um, just Whatever it it doesn't even matter. Um, um, even if it's being a good friend, I can be a better friend today than I was yesterday. I can be a better um, little brother than I was yesterday. The the things that my kids come back to me is so it's so far fetched, you know, because their little brains um, don't really know what they can do. But the more you pour into your kids, the more they know they can do it, and the more they'll try to do it because. They want to please you like my kids. They know they're my babies. They want to please me. Miss well, Miss Richardson, like when you whenever you're making that choice, no. So what is something you can do to make a better choice? Um, so I think with the positive affirmations, they know my kids know they can do they can do anything. It, it, it doesn't even matter. Um, even just being an African-American teacher, there's not many African-American teachers. So in my book, I'm telling, I'm, you know, they're like, I can be a teacher. Boys can be teachers. Girls can be teachers. So just being able to let them know that you can be anything um, that you want to be. Thank you for that. I love that. Um, we got a lot of questions, but we are coming to a close. I did want to ask Harrison, someone asked, because your characters are based on you and the people in your life, what was your illustration process specifically for your, for your story? Uh, basically looking at pictures of me uh, when I was a kid, uh, looking at uh, the character of Philip, who's based off of my brother-in-law, uh, just basically looking at him and figuring out, all right, how can I turn these guys, like myself included, into cartoons? Uh, like my uh, main character, I played football uh, high school and college and my number was 78. So one of the reasons, that's why I don't know if you can really see, but my character has a 78 on like all of his clothes, just because why not? That helps distinguish that that is based off of me uh and 
I mean, typically that's it. And the same thing with the, uh, I don't want a pet with my daughter. I just looked at a picture of her and when she had her little, uh, what do you call the side ponytails again? Uh, um, I mean, puff balls or, uh, well, her hair is not really puffy, but yeah, basically she had that hairstyle in it. And pigtails. I took a picture, pigtails. Thank you. And I was like, you know what? That's how, that's the design she's going to have on the front of the book. So basically, yeah, you just look at pictures and draw your version of that. I love it. Okay, one last question um, for those that would like to share, and also if it is, it will be in the bios as well um, for your your social media. A lot of people in here want to be able to support you all, um, so I'm gonna just go. If 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 you could raise your hand if you want to share your social media um, or ways to connect, if you have a website, um, share it with them, and then that way those that that are looking specifically for your titles can also um, connect with you there. Um, can you all share your, who can, uh, Sherelle? Okay. So you can follow me as Sherelle Bates on Instagram and you can, my link tree will take you to everything. It takes you to my story, what's inspired, uh, the book. It can also take you to the links of my book. Again, you can really Google, you can just Google me and find out, uh, everywhere that is sold. But again, wooly bully. It is sold uh, everywhere. And we, I would love to connect uh, by way of Instagram and kind of just see all that positive energy that we're just always giving out and just always being, again, the change that I wanted to see. So. Thank you. And um, Sana is not an author, but I do want to shout her out because she does some amazing work. Sana actually participated in Black Girls Film Camp last summer which was a um a film camp for black girls she made an amazing film and she uh, won some awards for that she was a rising a top star in that so i do want to shout her out she does a lot um on the back end so thank you so much Sana, for being here um dr jenica lewis how can um the audience connect with you I want to share uh, on Instagram, V, the letter V, Bowman, B-O-W-M-A-N, Foundation for Education. And I want to share that because we have scholarships that we give out, K-12 and also um, Rising College, and then on um, just different educational impact um, activities. So V Bowman Foundation for Education on Instagram. Thank you so much for that. Harrison? Uh, you can uh, follow uh, the company uh, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Flip Frog Books. Um, and if you go to the website, it is Flip Frog LLC slash Flip Frog Books. Uh, and that's where I sell uh, copies of the book. Actually, this the board book version of The Baking Tree is only available on my website, but any other version you can get off of Amazon. And also on that website, there are movie reviews as well, because I more than writing books, I write movie reviews. So. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Shakita? Um, you can visit my website. It's www.themelanin, like my shirt, the melanin ed, um, dot com. And if you order a book from the website, you'll get a signed copy from me. Love that. And then um, Serenity's mom put in there um, her her Serenity was um, our teen, our preteen from earlier. The author um, hers is at Renny Draws at R-E-N-Y-D-R-A-W-S. If you want to connect with her and support her, that is on Instagram. Um, and also there's a link to purchase her book in the to purchase her book and get free shipping. All right, Richie. Um, you guys can follow me on all social media at Lil Richie. Um, just as it's spelled right here um on the screen. S L I L R I C H Y E. And I'm just so thankful and so blessed to be right here and share this moment with you guys. I've really enjoyed it. Both of my books are available um on Amazon.com and Let's Ride Big Brother Big Shoes and the Know That Make Go, Go Harder. So I would appreciate you guys, you know, supporting and any way you guys want to reach out to me. Like I said, it's spelled just as it is on the the name right here, L-I-L-R-I-C-H-Y-E, Lil Richie. And uh, thank you guys once again. All right. And last but certainly not least, Charlita. You can find me at Raising Black Boy Joy on Instagram. 
um, where I am trying to penetrate the media with positive images full of Black Boy Joy. And you can go to my website at www.me3project.com. So me3project.com. Thank you so much. Um, Sydney, do you have any last words before we wrap up today? Thank you all for joining us. We really enjoyed it. Um, please check out some of our resources at the cmlibrary.org. Um, and then if you go to that YouTube channel, we do have a reading in color channel that we definitely encourage you to check out. Thank you again. Yes. So thank y'all so much for being here following this. The author's bios will play. It's going to be quick, but it's available on the YouTube Reading the Color playlist as well. So you can pause and get those uh, those titles and um, connect with them as well. But I want to thank your authors. I want to thank the team so much for joining us. This was a timely conversation that I wish we could continue because there's a lot of questions and it's a lot that I would like to ask. But this is such a timely conversation. You all, please tune in um, for next year. When we do this next year for the third time, you may see some of these faces. Um, but thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you, every, the audience, everyone that is um, that is here and joining us for your questions and participation. Um, thank you all. I really appreciate it. I hope everyone has a great night.